Greetings viewers, ETCG1 here. Hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. There's a cake for you. Hope you enjoy it. It's delicious, all digital and stuff. We tend to overcomplicate things, or at least that's been my experience. I've been doing the YouTube thing now for about 10 years, which means a lot of people have reached out to me and asked me questions about their vehicles and the problems that they're having with them. And there seems to be a pattern that at least I see. It seems that if there's a performance issue or something like that, we go after, oh, it's gotta be the computer or some sensor or some electronic something that's causing the problem. And I think we tend to gravitate towards this because it's stuff that we don't necessarily understand. And kinda, that's why I started my channel in the first place to help, you know, demystify a lot of the issues with auto repair. And most recently, I got an email from somebody in response to the gift that keeps on giving uh, it's time to get serious about the uh, auto repair industry. All this stuff's gonna be linked down in the description, so check there if you have questions. And he was talking about the auto repair industry, how complicated vehicles are getting, and specifically he was talking about electrical vehicles and the fact that you're gonna need a degree in electrical engineering to work on those vehicles. And I'm just thinking to myself, no, <laughs> no you don't. Because, all right, let me show you something. That's an electric vehicle. And you know what, this electric vehicle right here the one that does all this stuff and doesn't work that different from an electric vehicle, a Tesla or, or something like that. It's a bunch of batteries and an electric motor and a way of controlling the current going to that electric motor. And then there's the drivetrain, the thing that transmits the power to the wheels. That's it. That's how electric cars work. And they're no more complicated than internal combustion engines. In fact, I would argue that electric motors much less moving parts, much less complicated than the standard internal combustion engine with reciprocating pistons. The only thing that makes this work, the only real moving part is like the armature on the inside of it. So it's, it's electricity and magnetism that make motors work. If you understand electricity and magnetism, this is not a mystery. Neither are any of the other electronics. Yes, there's some programming that's involved that is some high level thinking, some math, some algorithms and things that make that programming do its thing. But mostly what that algorithm is controlling is just a series of on off switches that equate to this. That's it, so rather than me turning this switch, you got a gas pedal. I can't call it a gas pedal, it's more like a volume knob, but the point is, we tend to overcomplicate the things that we don't understand. And I think that's, especially when it comes to automotive, so the wrong way to go about it, the wrong way of thinking. Break it down, like if you move, like from one location to another. Like you're gonna move your apartment, you're gonna move your house in particular. Yeah, let's use a house as an example. So if you move from one house to another house, you have to pack up all that stuff inside that house, put it inside of a truck and transport it to your next house and then unload everything. I just recently went through this. <laughs> and trust me, it's a lot of work and anybody that's done it knows that it's a lot of work or even if you've you know, just watched your parents do it, it's a lot of work or the movers, whatever. Point is, you look at that, it seems super complicated. How the heck am I gonna get all this stuff packed up and move from this place to the next place? How's it gonna happen? Well, it happens one piece at a time. You take one thing, you put it in a box, you put the next thing in the box, you fill the box up and proceed onto the next box. And eventually, you've got a bunch of boxes instead of a room full of junk. And then you take said boxes, put them on a truck and move to another place. I know that seems oversimplified, but this is my point. You break it down into little parts, those things that you don't understand. You watch me take apart engines and transmissions and whatever, and you're like, oh, I don't know how you get all those parts back together. It's just a series of steps in the same way you put stuff in a box and pack the box on the back of a truck. It's the same way of thinking. And if you go into it thinking it's too complicated, I can't understand it, you're never going to understand it. You have to change your mindset. So don't think that the future is all full of gloom and doom and whatever. Well, it might be, but if try to be optimistic. Try to break it down into those little bits that you understand. Just because they put a giant iPad on the dashboard of a Tesla does not make it complicated. It really doesn't. Yes, it's a series of electronics and all that kind of thing, but I think at the end of the day, aside from the cost of the batteries, electric vehicles will be cheaper to produce <laughs> and perhaps they will be more plentiful. Look, these things are all over the store where I got these, the big box store. I mean, and, and cheap, <laughs> very cheap. And, and that's where I'm coming from with this. 
Now the batteries in this, readily available off the shelf and I shoved them in there. This is where the challenge comes in with electric vehicles. This is where that electrical engineering side comes in. But that has nothing to do with repairing them. If a battery fails or is failing, you replace it. It's, it's just that simple. In fact, I've argued in other videos that man vehicle manufacturers seem to be moving towards a modular construction. In other words, taking the quote unquote guesswork and mechanic work out of working on vehicles all together. They want to make it so that they can create 12 different vehicles out of one platform. For instance, the Fairmont over there, the Fox body platform. The reason I chose it, because it shares all the same chassis parts and everything as a Mustang from 19, 1979 to uh, 1993. So I've got a huge swath of aftermarket parts that I can choose from for that car, but it was never intended for that car. It was intended for that platform. Are you following me here? So pickup trucks, minivans, sedans, if they decide to make those anymore, will all be made on the same platform and they'll all use the same brake components. They'll all use the same. This Civic is another example. This Civic is exactly the same as that Integra underneath. But they call that an Integra and they call that a Civic. Point is, is I think this is going to be more and more prevalent within the automotive industry. So much so that even replacing a brake assembly, a brake assembly, you notice I said that, regenerative braking, instead of worrying about, you know, swapping pads and rotors, maybe you swap out a whole assembly that is the regenerative braking system and a friction material, if there even is a friction material or something like that that goes in there. Now, granted, the electronics and stuff that, that are behind this, as I stated, could seem complicated, but break it down. It's not that complicated. I think that manufacturers want to turn mechanics into parts changers. They don't necessarily want people with a lot of mechanical background or anything. They just want people who can take things apart and put it back together the way they want it to. I think that's what they want. I, I don't even, I think vehicles will get to that point, but they'll make it proprietary so only they have access to the software and whatever to give it the handshake between that new brake module you just installed and the vehicle that it's going into. That's where I think it'll be. And then, of course, the, the hackers may come in and figure out how to manipulate those systems, whatever. That's an entirely different discussion. My point about this video is, if you go into a repair or a concept such as an electric vehicle with the idea that is so complicated it's beyond your understanding, you're never going to understand it. But if you break it down into its component parts, if you think about this as a motor and some batteries on the inside of uh, a plastic housing, which is all it is, that's all you need to do. That's the mentality. So don't think things are beyond your comprehension. You don't know what you're capable of until you try. So try. The difference between failure and success is often just one more try. That's what got me where I am today. I used to tell myself that a whole lot in very challenging times, believe me. Anyway, as I stated earlier, there will be links in the description to additional videos and stuff for you to watch and be entertained by because you like watching my stuff, don't you? Yeah, you do. If you have automotive questions, there'll be a link in the description to airatthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go to get those automotive questions answered. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and do all those things that help me make a living. You know I appreciate that. The ETCG1 videos come out on Monday, so stop back and see me then. Unless you're a premium member of airatthecarguy.com, then you got a chance to see it on Sunday. So if you're one of those people that's like, Eric, you've got to make a video on my birthday. It's this Sunday. Well, be a premium member and you'll see it. Or just wait till Monday in a couple of years, whatever. Anyway, information on that will also be in the description. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.